Okay, today we will uh, continue talking about wings. Next uh, method, more uh, general method we will discuss today to calculate uh, properties around the wing is a numerical non-linear uh, non lifting line method. Method which will allow us to calculate lift uh, around a wing with the consideration of uh, uh, distribution of uh, vortex source on the line. As uh, we started to discuss earlier, such method is also similar to frontal lifting line method, where several vortexes are uh, combined in order to describe real distribution of uh, circulation and real distribution of lift on the surface of the wing. This slide here represents the method of calculation. It's, I tried here to uh, combine all the equations required for calculation of the wing. Let's go one by one. Uh, on figure 28, we see a uh, representation of the wing. Uh, this wing uh, is a uh, long wing with a high aspect ratio. It could be uh, it could have a, a rectangular configuration or could have uh, this configuration with the variable chord along the wing. Uh, what is the model? First of all, we need to remember what is the induced angle of attack. It is angle of attack which is caused by presence of vortex um, on the tip of the wing, right, losses. Induced angle of attack describes for us how much we lose uh, in terms of uh, uh, of angle uh, with respect to a geometrical angle of attack. And uh, this uh, relation we also can see here. I'm uh, marking with the blue color on my screen that uh, instead of using geometrical angle of attack alpha, calculation of the wing utilizes so-called effective angle of attack, which is difference between geometrical angle of attack and induced angle of attack. Uh, maximum possible alpha minus losses alpha. Same by words. Uh, but uh, we will talk about this a bit further. Uh, question 75 is representing uh, to us uh, calculation of induced angle of attack uh, according to lifting line theory presented on uh, previous lecture. If you do not remember, please take a look uh, on our uh, previous class or read in the book, the previous chapter uh, of the book. Uh, here we see that induced angle of attack can be represented as some integral function where we are integrating properties of circulation along the wing from minus b divided by 2 until b divided by 2. Uh, so we integrate from left side of the wing until the right side of the wing between extreme points. Inside the integral function, we have a derivative of circulation function along the uh, wing line along y coordinate. Also, this y coordinate is shown on figure 28. And uh, this integral function would be also reverse proportional to a uh, distance between uh, point of uh, point of interest and any other arbitrary point where we are providing our integration. So since uh, uh, the concept is same, all influence on all on incompressible and uh, subsonic aerodynamics, we must integrate everywhere to obtain induced angle of attack at any specific point yn. 
this y end point where we are calculating okay and y is uh, other points on the other cross sections uh, induced angle of attack is changing with the change of coordinate it must be clear that uh, is not constant value induced angle of attack is changing with respect to coordinate with respect to geometry uh, and uh, uh, distribution of circulation to uh, solve numerically equation 575 we will split our wing into a number of sections here on figure 28 we see that uh, wing is split on k plus one number of sections okay uh, some number of sections probably would be equal on the left side of the wing and on the right side of the wing uh, more number of sections we have more accurate would be calculation right uh, but there is always a limit reasonable limit of number of division uh, each uh, wing could use i think would be 30, 40, maximum 50 divisions, totally 100 divisions along all the wing on the left and on the right side could be a reasonable value of a section, cross sections. Each cross section of the wing, starting from one until K plus one, can be represented by airfoil. Each cross section is a separate airfoil. This airfoil has its properties, uh, distribution of uh, lift coefficient with respect to angle of attack, uh, drag coefficient with respect to angle of attack, also momentum coefficient, we remember, right? So we will use these uh, cross-sectional properties on each cross-section of our wing to calculate. But to start uh, process of computation, sorry, uh, to start process of computation, dividing this wing in a number of sections, we must assume some number of uh, circulations as initial uh, distribution. We assume uh, values from gamma 1 to gamma k plus 1 uh, values. It could be non-zero values, right? It could be some positive uh, positive values of circulation that correspond to uh, lift we are expecting uh, on this cross section or lift coefficient uh, we are expecting on this cross section. In general, it's not uh, important uh, values are not so much important of these circulations. If uh, a computational uh, algorithm is stable, it will converge into a specific solution. It will just, um, if uh, values are not so close to real values of circulation, can take more time to obtain final solutions. Could be more iterations, right? But uh, generally, uh, solution does not depend on choice of uh, initial distribution of gamma. We know that uh, on cross section one and cross section k plus one uh, circulation would be smallest or zero, right? Because we are on the tip of the wing where uh, we have equilibrium of upper and lower pressure on the airfoil, so probably would be zero value of circulation as well. So gamma one and gamma k plus one are zero or values close to zero. Uh, on uh, in the middle. Cross section gamma would be maximum, so it could be linear distribution or could be parabolic distribution, elliptical distribution, depending on shape of uh, the wing, or even could be constant values of gamma. As I told you, it will only impact on number of iterations, but not will will not impact on the final values of solution. Then uh, once we define gamma for each cross section, we enter loop. Our loop is a step by step calculation of uh, induced angle of attack. Uh, uh, approximated uh, equation 75 to equation 76, where instead of integrating, we are uh, calculating some of uh, functions, right? Uh, 
It's a numerical transformation instead of uh, analytical integration. We just summate uh, functions inside this integral according to equation 76 is represented uh, this function. Uh, okay, I think it's uh, you can see easily that uh, just a moment, I will remove here my notes that under integral function represented in equation 75 is uh, similar to integration which we are calculating by numerical method. So it's an analog uh, equation. So mating for all cross sections uh, except uh, first right and uh, uh, the last one also is not included because circulation for first and the last are equal zero. So we, they are excluded from computation since uh, circulation equal to zero also. Okay, no need to define gamma. No, no need to calculate at this cross-section. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, numerically obtain uh, induced angle of attack. Since in equation 76, all parameters are known. Gamma is known from initial distribution. Y is uh, uh, coordinate, which is also known. Difference between coordinates is known. And this uh, is uh, happening for all these three part of uh, relation inside our sum. We numerically obtain induced angle of attack according to equation 76. Once we have this numerical value for each cross section, so number of uh, induced angles of attack is equal to number of uh, cross sections minus two, uh, uh, because we don't use for first and the last one, we uh, calculate for each cross section effective angle of attack. Here, effective angle of attack also is calculated for each cross section. And then with known effective angle of attack and known airfoil on each cross section, we obtain lift coefficient or normal coefficient, depend on uh, which parameter we are using in the calculation by kuta zhukovsky theorem, usually lift coefficient, right? We have experimental curve of airfoil, two-dimensional case, alpha versus CL, okay, for all angles of attack where we can uh, uh, use uh, some approximation, linear approximation or parabolic or spline function to join uh, experimental points. Once we have effective angle of attack, for each cross section, we see which value of lift coefficient we obtain. So this is the schematic how we obtain lift coefficient from experimental two-dimensional case, two-dimensional uh, data of uh, lift coefficient for each airfoil. We have our airfoil. I hope it looks like airfoil. I tried to make airfoil, maybe not so perfect. Maybe my next attempt would be better. Also not so good, but OK. Let's assume this is an airfoil. In my next life, I would be a painter. Uh, then when we have a lift coefficient obtained from experimental data or from numerical data or from a thumb curve, which we use, probably better to use experimental data in, on this step. Uh, or uh, empirical function based on this experimental data. Let's see if we automat uh, would like to make automatic uh, calculation for all points. We use this lift coefficient inside the kuta zhukovsky theorem. Next equation, which is, says us that uh, lift uh, force per unit span would be proportional to density, velocity, and circulation. From one side, and from another side, uh, defining lift as a function of lift coefficient by known relation that CL is L divided by 
q infinite c right we can calculate uh lift per unit span as well so on the left side kutazhikovsky theorem on the right side classical definition of lift coefficient from these uh equilibrium between these two quantities we obtain gamma circulation over uh, uh, over our airfoil at this particular cross section by formula presented uh, on the bottom of the screen then we compare uh, our previous estimation old estimation of gamma and the new estimation of gamma we see if it's uh, different, if it's uh, same, how much is the difference? How many percent is the difference? And then we compare with accept and accepted uh, difference. For example, I would like to calculate with accuracy of 5%. So all my gamma would be uh, smaller than 5% uh, uh, difference between old and new circulation. And then I make decision if I continue calculation or I can stop my calculation is gamma doesn't change uh, so much more than 5% anymore. Usually 5% is too much for this calculation. We, we can use uh, usually 0, 0.1% uh, 0, difference and it will require not so many iterations. So I think less than 10 iterations even. Uh, okay, if we use method with the um, um, uh, relaxation like presented on the very bottom of uh, of my screen method with relaxation coefficient d uh, we can have uh, significantly reduced number of iterations can be five maximum 10 iterations so 10 times calculating this wink we will obtain very very nice uh, uh, correspondence between uh, old and uh, new data, so data will be stabilized. Once uh, gamma is not changing anymore for all cross sections, we stop calculation, and in this way, we assume that we obtain solution. Our solution is a list of uh, circulations on each cross section of the wind. Once we obtain gamma i, we uh, use it in equation 75 again or in equation 76 we obtain uh, induced angle of attack with induced angle of attack we obtain downwash velocity okay alpha i we uh, obtain downwash velocity we obtain lift and uh, this is all this is all we need to know about a real wind. Main purpose of this numerical method is to obtain uh, lift, general lift distribution, and uh, we obtain uh, induced uh, induced angle of attack since it has a strict relation to uh, also uh, losses and induced drag. Uh, just one comment here. Let me try to write there is no space on my previous slide i will try to write i will try to invent that lift would be uh, integral of lift per unit span multiplied by dy once we integrate from minus b divided by 2 to b divided by 2. this is analytically right but once we go to numerical method numerically we can calculate it as sum of uh, uh, similar to previous one it was uh, j okay j starting from 2 to k all cross sections except first and uh, last because it's zero circulation no, no need no sense to calculate at these points uh, and uh, uh, instead of integral we use product l prime multiplied by delta y Delta Y is uh, distance between cross sections as uh, shown on figure 528. Very simple uh, calculation. We obtain total lift over the wing.
general integral characteristics. Uh, such process can uh, uh, is also implemented in uh, commercial um, uh, free software. You can find it on XLFR5 uh, implementation of this algorithm, also in other softwares related to design of, uh, of the wing and calculation of the wings. Uh, such a method is uh, also working for different uh, from non-separating flows, uh, flow regimes. So for example, for stall conditions and for conditions uh, that are far from stall conditions, for high angle of attack, as you may see on figure 30. This happened because to calculate uh, lift coefficient, we can use real uh, distribution of, uh, um, as I told you, real experimental data that may be taken not just for uh, flow, efficient flow uh, from zero to uh, stall conditions, but also for any arbitrary angle of attack. We take data uh, from interval starting from flow separation and we can obtain lift coefficient for high angles of attack. So this method has advantage with respect to numerical methods we discussed just for airfoil, because this method works also with flow separation uh, and regimes uh, after flow separation happens. So it's not limited just by, just by um, continuous flow without uh, uh, flow separation can be used at any, any regime. Here, uh, there is a comparison between uh, rectangular wind experimental data and numerical data by this method. You can see that experimental and numerical data are extremely close. So this method is valid uh, for calculation of wings. This is why it's implemented on uh, uh, software. It's uh, reliable for calculation of uh, flow properties on the wing. And this method, as you saw in my previous slide, it requires very few equations. So this uh, method is extremely efficient. From computational point of view, it's fast. If you calculate wing in uh, Excel, XLFR5, uh, you will obtain fast the solution. Uh, so this uh, figure 30 shows that applicability of this method can be in almost any angle of attack where we have experimental data from airfoil. And also one more comment about this figure, why uh, experimental and numerical data are so close. Because also we take inside algorithm CL from experimental results. So, uh, here we use experimental data on this step. So this is why correspondence with the uh, experimental data final result is also close. If we would use just data, for example, for thin airfoil theory or cambered airfoil theory calculation of this CL, of course, we would not have such a good uh, correspondence between experiment and calculation. But since inside our algorithm we use two-dimensional data from airfoil experimental, this is why uh, convergence with uh, three-dimensional simulation is also close. Figure 29 shows also another example for NACA 1412 for different wings with different aspect ratio and uh, numerical methods. So, uh, experimental and numerical data uh, along the wingspan, uh, dimensionless. Uh, dimensionless where coordinate y is uh, uh, has a reference of b divided by 2. So coordinate changes dimensionless from 0 to 1. And the circulation is also dimensionless, is uh, having reference gamma 0, where gamma 0 is uh circulation on the root of uh, of the wind on the center of the wind 
what we see from these uh, graphics, we see that uh, for low aspect ratio wind, circulation is smaller, average uh, in all points, circulation is smaller, except uh, uh, root and tip. On the tip is zero, on the root is one. Always have uh, this uh, behavior, right? From uh, one to zero. These two points can, we cannot change, but changing aspect ratio, we change uh, overall uh, distribution of lift. Bigger aspect ratio means uh, bigger uh, circulation values and bigger lift. So we, we, as I told you, would like to have uh, as big as possible aspect ratio of uh, airplane. It uh, allows to design more uh, efficient airplanes. But same time, from structural point of view, this is not possible because uh, wing has a, a limited strength or so properties of material. So uh, we must find a balance between efficiency in aerodynamic point of view and the materials properties. On uh, figure 31, we see another, uh, uh, I think it's a visualization of uh, uh, of flow. Let's say it's a sort of visualization, very uh, famous technique to vis visualize flow on three-dimensional bodies, especially on the wings, where we put uh, an oil, a film of oil, uh, on the uh, surface of the wing, and then with flow of air, this surface or pattern of oil changes in time. After some after some time, this pattern of oil changes uh, according to velocity which was acting on this wing. Here we can observe that on the center of the wing, flow was more uh, fast. On the middle right and on the uh, periphery probably flow was going uh, forming the tip vortex one of the techniques very nice old style techniques to visualize flow around the wing i think this work has uh, many many decades Uh, I would like to remind you that you can ask questions if you have. And uh, let me know by also by voice. I can see comments today. If you have questions, I would uh, answer. Next topic I would like to talk is an extension of previous method. Each method has an extension, right? Uh, and this uh, method, which I told you, it has one specific, uh, not a disadvantage, but feature. Let's call it feature that such method I explained here uh, works with the uh, wing close to rectangular wing, right? A uh, high aspect ratio wing where we can determine that the length of the wing is much bigger than the uh, chord size on its cross section. Uh, also, uh, this has uh, this is a limit, right? This is a limit. Usually, if we have wing of arbitrary shape, we cannot uh, use it. You cannot use this method if our wing is having complex shape, very complex shape, different from shape you can see on Figure 28. So this method requires uh, an improvement and. Uh, this improvement allows to calculate wings of more, more complex shape. Uh, this uh, method is called lifting surface theory and vortex slots numerical method. This method can be used for wings. You can see on figure 32, like low aspect uh, ratio, straight wings could be used for swept wings, could be used for delta wings. So these wings which could not be calculated with the previous method. What is the difference in physical process? Why we cannot calculate with previous method? Because here 
we can see disturbances going uh, in uh, different directions and the value of disturbances velocity components going in different directions would be uh, similar. So if for rectangular wing or wing with high aspect ratio, we can say that V infinite is big and the disturbance which is uh, forming this vortex is small. OK, V component of velocity is uh, small, close to zero or V component of velocity is uh, much smaller than V infinite. For these three types of wings, which you can see on my screen, this doesn't happen. We can say that V infinite would be similar to uh, uh, perturbation to velocity which go on the side of this wing. So we must use another concept. We must introduce same uh, capabilities or same uh, mathematical uh, tool for distribution of velocity in axial uh, direction or direction of flow and in a perpendicular direction as, as well. So we must use a function which takes into account two velocities in two different directions on the wing axis and perpendicular to the wing axis. This must be taken into account. The approach to this uh, concept is also uh, based on Helmholtz theorem, which we uh, which we discussed last time. Uh, probably you remember equation 77 we had uh, previously once we developed uh, lifting line theory. Here, instead of uh, just one vortex sheet for previous theory, we use vortexes distributed not on the line, but distributed on the plane. So we separate our wing into a number of elements. On each element, we would have vortex uh, in uh, direction perpendicular to the axis of the wing, to y-axis, and we will have also another vortex which is perpendicular to the x-axis. We have two perpendicular vortexes for this type of wing since it's, it has this three-dimensional shape. We must take into account vortexes in two different directions. Uh, mathematically, this model is written here. Uh, change of uh, downwash velocity uh, in uh, y direction or in at direction is uh, shown on equation 78. Okay, this uh, is similar to equation we already saw for downwash velocity in a previous theory, but also we have a downwash velocity in x direction or uh, z, z direction. Right? Okay, let's talk. Let's say uh, x direction. X direction. See, so we have two downwash velocities. We have a global downwash velocity as integral of these two functions, combining this integral or summating these uh, two functions and integrating these two functions. One will be integrated in uh, direction of uh, S, is the one direction, and over the area over the area and uh, S and uh, the second part would be integrated over the region W, which is shown on uh, figure 34, 34. Uh, control points of wing, uh, all the wing is uh, split on number of these elements where we have uh, two vortexes acting on each uh, uh, control element or finite element as uh, shown on this figure here, horseshoe vortex on each uh, panel. And then we cover with these panels all the wing and we 
uh, calculate distribution of vortexes all over the wind, uh, building equation system, integrating the no, this integral is not shown in numerical form, integrating equation 80 numerically. OK, here we have. A possibility to. To transform this equation 80 into its uh, algebraic form, approximate algebraic form. And calculate distribution of vortexes along the wing with the similar um, boundary conditions that say that on the tip of the wing or on the border of the wing, we have zero circulation uh, in. Uh, depending on uh, on the edge, right? Uh, for example, on these. Edges here circulation would be gamma gamma function would be equal to zero, but on the edges in uh, front and uh, at the end, uh, delta, I yeah, will say delta circulation would be equal to zero. Gamma circulation is a gamma vortex, right? Uh, along the y axis and the delta is a delta vortex along the x axis. So with these boundary conditions, we can numerically solve uh, that huge integral equation and uh, with a similar uh, concept that we had for uh, lifting line lifting line method we can obtain solution distribution of gamma and distribution of uh, delta vortexes integrating all together or summating gammas uh, products, right, size of cell by gamma function, and summating delta vortex uh, by um, calculating product of delta and size of cell on uh, x direction, we obtain uh, lift totally, a total lift. I am not showing you this solution. Anderson also doesn't show you this solution. I think it's too much, and he says it's outside of discussion how this uh, solution is obtained numerically mm. because it's more mathematical than uh, aerodynamic problem. As a result of this calculation, we can see the following formulas. Formula 69, I think we already saw somewhere uh, here, this formula is telling to us how much would be the uh, lift slope. A is the lift slope for the wind. How uh, lift slope is changing with respect to uh, angle of attack. Uh, related to A0, which is lift slope for the airfoil. And aspect ratio of the wing. This is Prandtl's approximation, the simplest possible equation 69. This I it's written here. So this is uh, the equation. You can see that compared with experimental data, Prandtl's approximation is not so good. Always is overestimating the lift slope. Uh, so it's uh, predicting lift higher than real lift. So this is the problem, right? It's better to underestimate than to overestimate. And uh, to solve the problem of uh, this uh, uh, overestimation, we have equation 81 and 82, which are also empirical uh, solutions, uh, giving better correspondence between experimental data and uh, model. Equation 81 is Helmholtz equation is also having some uh, difference with experimental data mostly at higher aspect ratio at lower aspect ratio is uh, is good uh, corresponding to experiment uh, lift slope according to Helmholtz uh, theory is also proportional to lift slope of airfoil and the aspect ratio varies but more complex function right and equation 82 uh, is uh, 
uh, used for the swept wing is taking into account also angle of swept wing, which you can see on uh, equation 38. Angle of uh, swept wing is defined on half chord line. In the middle of chord, we can build a line between the root of the wing and the uh, tip of the wing and the uh, angle between horizontal line or line of uh, uh, rectangular wind perpendicular to flow and this halford line is lambda can be put inside function 82 to calculate the lift slope for the swept wing. Uh, if you calculate according to this formula, you can see that uh, uh, lift slope for the swept wing is uh, more attractive with respect to rectangular wing. Uh, and uh, this is why uh, swept wings are justified to be used uh, since a uh, long, long time ago, even before development of modern uh, CFT methods. So these wings were created. Equations 69, 81, and 82 are extremely important for preliminary estimation of, uh, of wing performance. They give us very nice data, as you can see from figure 37. Of course, Prantl's estimation is the worst one because it's very simple and the life is not so simple as uh, was imagined. But uh, Prantl's formula was the first one, first attempt is uh, uh, proposal, right, which was in future improved in equation 81 and 82. So this is why equation 69 is also important because it was the main idea how to take into consideration uh, these uh, parameters and a relate parameter on the uh, wing and on the airfoil. It's extremely important to, to see this relation between wing and airfoil to know how performance, or at least uh, lift could be recalculated. Please let me know if you have some questions. Just a moment, I will take a glass of water and uh, come back in one minute. If you have question, please write in the comment. Okay, I see no questions. Let's continue with the next uh, topic, which is delta wing. Some introduction to delta wings. Uh, I give you here. Uh, there are a lot of literature because it's a very popular subject. And uh, it was published uh, worldwide. Delta wings are known from a long time ago. It was a dream to fly having these uh, wings they have advantages and disadvantages uh, as you saw mostly they are used for supersonic flight uh, regime right 
But uh, if we look to real airplane, even supersonic airplane presented uh, presented here, uh, in most of their time, uh, these airplanes they fly with supersonic velocity only for a short uh, time. Uh, it, they accelerate to supersonic velocity, mostly because uh, supersonic velocity requires huge energy expenses and uh, uh, amount of fuel is usually limited on the airplane or uh, aircraft. Here there are two examples of uh, uh, supersonic airplane from United States Air Force and uh, Space Shuttle. Also there are a lot of uh, similar structure using delta wing uh, theory. Since uh, uh, aircraft uh, in most of the time must fly with uh, subsonic velocity, this question of calculation of delta wing and the study of delta wing for subsonic application is also important, same uh, than uh, for supersonic velocity. So delta wings must be optimized for two regimes. This is why uh, construction of such airplanes is uh, not a trivial, not a trivial task at all, because flow is very different on subsonic and supersonic regime, transonic regime, and uh, to find the balance between all these uh, missions or uh, operating conditions is extremely, extremely hard. Structure of the flow around uh, delta wind can be seen on equation 41. It's a very nice visualization. I like a lot this uh, picture. You can see that on delta wind uh, we have uh, uh, an extremely strong vortex on the top of the wing formed starting from the uh, leading edge from starting of the delta wing and until the end of the wing this huge uh, vortex is uh, happening. It's not actually one vortex, it's a system of vortexes, right? Uh, all which adapts to, adapts to operating conditions. Since uh, these vortexes are big with respect to uh, wind uh, size, they have considerably big size, uh, delta wings are not so efficient than conventional rectangular wings or swept wings or high aspect ratio wings. They are less uh, efficient. So lift to drag ratio is not so good for this wing. But uh, delta wings is one of the few options to fly with supersonic velocity. This is why uh, they are used. You know, we cannot use conventional wings nowadays. For, to have uh, supersonic velocity and uh, also for high velocity flight, especially for supersonic flight, uh, we do not need very high lift coefficient. Since velocity is high, it's supersonic. Once we multiply small value of lift coefficient on high uh, Mach number and high velocity values, uh, lift created by this wind will be considerable and will be enough to carry high weight. So since uh, lift force is proportional to velocity in square, uh, for high velocity application, uh, wing can be not so much efficient and the wing area should not be so big. Uh, figure 40 shows to us different uh, configurations of delta wing. It's just a few of possible uh, geometry uh, variations. Simple delta, uh, just triangular wing, uh, uh, crop delta when we cut uh, tips of the wing to reduce uh, overall uh, size of, uh, of the airplane, notched delta where the bottom part of the wing or back part of the wing is having not straight shape, it's having chord shape. Uh, and the double delta is uh, when delta wind is composed by two triangular shapes changing somewhere in the middle. This uh, double delta can be seen, for example, on uh, space shuttle. If we go back, you can easily see that there is 
shape composed by two triangular triangular wings here. Okay, these wings cannot be unfortunately calculated by any uh, analytical model. It does not exist. These wings should be uh, designed using modern CFD methods, mostly because they have separation of vortexes. So here would be very important to use an appropriate uh, model of uh, viscosity, turbulent, turbulence. Right, and also extremely important is experimental testing of such wings on uh, high velocity wind tunnels and also low velocity wind tunnels because, as I told you, they operate in most part of their time in a subsonic velocity regime. Here, very beautiful visualization of uh, vortexes on delta wing is shown. Uh, it's, uh, I think, the yeah, it's a visualization of flow inside uh, water, inside water. So it's not a flow inside air. All right. As uh, you remember, I already commented to you that there is a very interesting publication and a free publication that anyone can download and uh, study called. Uh, uh, album of fluid motion one dike. Uh, this uh, here is a very interesting book. Is a very interesting book, uh, which I recommend to everyone to study and see. Is not just uh, about uh, delta wing or wing. It studies a lot of different types of flow, compressible and complete, and compressible, subsonic and supersonic. And uh, it's showing you, showing us how beautiful could be uh, flow structures, how interesting could be these flow structures. And nowadays, uh, these flow structures could be simulated, right? Uh, studied in uh, virtual, in a virtual space like CFD software. Uh, on a uh, long time ago, when this album of fluid motion was created, 1982, of course, uh, only experimental methods existed. Nowadays, we can have at least two methods, experiment and uh, CFT. Very nice. Here is visualization of uh, vortexes uh, above delta wing. You see also that uh, it's, a, it's an experiment inside water with uh, inter, uh, introduced air bubbles, small air bubbles inside water and with the high uh, I don't remember this word time time uh, photos right what is this not expositions. If someone is uh, likes photo or photograph, you know it. Uh, I don't remember the word with the high delta t. Okay, big uh, time um, uh, difference between uh, uh, opening and closing diaphragm. It can be seen uh, directions of bubbles or uh, path lines of bubbles. And uh, in this way, we visualize vortexes behind or above the delta wing. We can see that these vortexes are huge, such a huge uh, rotating structures characterize for us presence of high losses on the delta wing. But there is no way, almost no way to improve. And there are several ways to improve, but uh, not um, to eliminate, right? Improvement of uh, delta wind could be done by changing several parameters on this delta wing. Here you can see uh, distribution of CP, pressure coefficient on delta wind. We can see that is a high CP difference between uh, upper and lower side of delta wing on the close to the tip of the wing. So this is why. Uh, vortex would be strong 
higher pressure difference or higher pressure coefficient uh, difference, uh, more energy we have for formation of vortex. If we have some way to reduce this uh, CP difference, we will reduce strength of vortex, but we cannot eliminate. Let me see. We, uh, here. Here, with the modification of geometry of delta wing with the inclined uh, final part of the delta wing against uh, the wall or downwards, uh, we obtain smaller value of pressure coefficient difference and we reduce uh, strength of vortex on the delta wing. What we miss in the middle, let's go to see. This is a variation of a lift coefficient, typical value of a lift coefficient of flat delta wing. And the patient, uh, sorry, figure 45. Let me zoom a bit. This part, uh, we see that uh, delta wing can create uh, lift coefficient in order of uh, 1, 1 1.5 for angle of attack uh, more than 30 degrees. So these wings can work with high angles of attack, but depend on the geometry, of course, on organization of um, shape, because it's three dimensions, not b dimensional structure. Uh, so typical values are 1 from 1 to 1.5 in the middle. Uh, for high angles of attack. For low angles of attack, we can see that it's small value of uh, lift coefficient. For example, for 10 degrees, okay, how much would be less than 0 0.5, 0 0.4 probably, 0.4 lift coefficient. Uh, figure 46 uh, showing us the uh, effect of um, leading edge shape lift on lift to drag ratio leading edge shape is uh, means that we can have a uh, um, sharp edge which is a flat delta <clears throat> and uh, flat delta has the smallest possible lift to drag ratio on the delta wing because the sharp is not good for aerodynamics, right? We know that for aerodynamics must have a smooth aerodynamic shape if you would like to fly in a subsonic, subsonic conditions efficiently. And then there is a, a leading edge vortex flap, a structure which uh, uh, improves low behavior near the delta wing with the flap with additional device, which is uh, uh, refining flow near the wing, reducing uh, flow separation region, similar to uh, an idea which we discussed on uh, airfoils, where flaps are used to improve region of flow separation, to reduce uh, flow separation on the trailing edge of the airfoil. Here is the same idea with this flap on delta wing. We reduce uh, uh, flow separation and reduce strength of vortex in uh, all possible ranges of lift coefficient. So lift to drag ratio can be uh, higher. If for sharp, sharp edge is a bit more than nine, maybe 9.5. For the uh, flap, okay, let me make more straight line. I will try. It will be close to 11.5 with flap introduced. And there is also another curve, uh, the third one, which is uh, uh, this dashed line corresponding to space shuttle. This high value delta wing uh, with the well rounded leading edge, where drag coefficient uh, empirically can be calculated, right? Uh, empirically means approximately according to analysis of experimental data, drag coefficient can be estimated. 0, 0, 006 plus 11 lift coefficient in squared divided by pi a 
and aspect ratio. Well-rounded leading edge is good for subsonic flight because we know that well-profiled subsonic uh, uh, airplanes are nice. But what happens when it starts to fly supersonic? Well-rounded edge like this of the wing. If someone saw space shuttle wing, I tell you this uh, uh, leading edge of this wing is extremely uh, thick, right? Uh, Well-rounded. So what happens when we fly with subsonic velocity? It's good because we have all uh, uh, performance correspond which corresponds to thick airfoils, very performant, high uh, efficiency flow. But when we start to fly with supersonic, we start to have a bow shock wave a shockwave around. This shockwave is extremely uh, highly energetic and it consumes a lot of energy. So you cannot accelerate, you can just decelerate. Since uh, space shuttle is designed for deceleration from hypersonic velocity to subsonic velocity, this uh, well-rounded leading edge on delta wing works perfectly. Okay, this is because space shuttle is not designed for acceleration. It is designed for deceleration. This is why we can use well-rounded leading edge on delta wing in this case. If we have airplane which would uh, fly with subsonic and supersonic accelerating by itself, not by gravity, we need uh, for flat delta or uh, delta wing with leading edge vortex flap. Unfortunately, well-rounded leading edge in this case would not work because in such a flight regime, we will not be able to accelerate to supersonic velocity. I hope it's clear more or less. Uh, okay. Sorry. I will turn off here the sound. sound. Uh, on figure 49, we have simulation of uh, delta wing with different angles of attack. 5 degrees, 15 degrees, and 40 degrees. For 5 degrees, we see that uh, it's a small vortex. Okay, it's just one half of the wing. The uh, vortex shown on one half of the wing. On the another half of the wing, it's absolutely the same vortex. For 5 degrees angle of attack, vortex is... Uh, stationary, let's say thin. For 15 angle, uh, 15 degrees, vortex already starts to break. Highly turbulent uh, structure, right? Starts to create extremely complex uh, turbulent structure uh, on the last part of the wing. And on a high angle of attack, 40 degrees, we see that uh, it's um, extremely. Uh, develop turbulent uh, flow separation on the top of the wing, even having high uh, high lift coefficient, right? This uh, flow structure is uh, complex, is complex. Of course, cannot be calculated analytically, can be simulated with, uh, uh, let's call it advanced uh, turbulence methods. Advanced turbulence method, uh, which uh, allow us to calculate turbulence which is separated from the body. These turbulence methods we will uh, discuss only in gas dynamics. Uh, or you can study in the book of Anderson to anticipate this question. I think it's very interesting topic. It's very interesting topic, very interesting visualization. Uh, such visualization or very similar visualizations to this one, also we can find in many videos uh, of uh, flow or simulation, high quality flow simulation. If you like, can share this uh, information, right? Also, Anderson gives to us reference to the paper from 2003 where this wind was simulated. If you are interested to know about details, 
of this uh, work, I could uh, search for this article for someone who likes, who would like to have this uh, paper to study. I think UNB can have access to this uh, information. OK, this is the end of part five and of uh, incompressible uh, two dimensional, let's say two dimensional flow and mostly two dimensional flow. Even though if we took a part of three dimensional flow, it was not so much obvious. And um, in uh, chapter six, we have a very short discussion about uh, three dimensional flow or analytical calculation of three dimensional flow like flow around sphere, introduction of uh, three dimensional doublet. And then uh, we will stop with the incompressible aerodynamics at all. Chapter six is extremely short. I'm planning to give you chapter six next time, next week. And then um, we are finishing with the uh, lectures on aerodynamics, you will have enough time to produce, to finish who didn't finish yet, uh, work two and work three. Of course, I will recommend you every week to study questionnaire of aerodynamics and I will tell you which videos to show, to see. And uh, on Fridays, uh, we can meet also to discuss practical applications of aerodynamics. And the mostly, I think, would be discussion of about simulations. Tomorrow we can meet and talk about uh, simulations in Lance's fluid uh, with respect to airfoils or with respect of any, any other questions you found uh, interested, interesting in internet or in the book. We can also discuss these questions. I would like to also to show you some techniques, how to process data, how to represent data, uh, because uh, these methods which I can show you, they are uh, used worldwide uh, for validation of uh, EFT simulations. And I think it would be very important for you to know at least an idea how this uh, um, calculation and how this data processing should be done. Data processing is extremely important in CFD uh computations please let me know if you have questions about part five and uh, i can wait one minute two minutes for your questions and uh, tomorrow i think our lecture is on schedule yes is on schedule i would like to remind you that every time when we have class it's on the uh, calendar of teams if there is nothing on calendar of teams, it means that I uh, will not give class or I gave you some uh, homework to study, right? To see some video which I already recorded before. Please pay attention on this. Uh, okay, I can wait one minute uh, if some question appears. Please let me know. No questions. I see no questions. I heard no questions, but just one person said, OK. Um, <clears throat> we meet tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much for participation. I will not record uh, further classes anymore. Just if you need, uh, let me know if some practical uh, questions we can record. But since will be no more uh, uh, lectures, uh, new lectures on new materials. Uh, oh, no, wait. We will have one more lecture on uh, Tuesday. Just one more lecture on Tuesday about chapter six, but it's short, so I do not consider it as a, as a big lecture. I think we will talk very short time because chapter six is extremely short. Uh, and uh, also look on Tuesday if you have uh, questions about some theory you uh, study in aerodynamics and you would like to discuss let me know or you already have all the material or will have 
all the material on Tuesday from theoretical point of view, which I ask on uh, oral test, uh, and then from next week we could pay more attention on on practice than uh, theory. Okay, please do not forget to read the book. is the main source of your information, but not just Anderson book. There are also other books which I recommend you not read them all, but maybe some question would be more interesting than the others, and it's better explained in the other books. Okay, thank you for participation today. I finish recording.